we'll go on the program. So, uh, Joel, welcome up. <laughs> I need some water for this one. That's right, Goldberg. If you wanted a slice of cheese, man, you're going to get it. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, David Manster for letting us turn ERV into WWE for a little bit of time here this morning. Uh, for those of you that have been following Cheese, that's been quite an interesting couple of weeks uh, blogging about Jobster. And I realize a lot of you don't know or read Cheesehead, so I'm going to keep the questions a little hard-edged just as we like to go with, uh, with the Cheesehead audience, but keep them uh, general as well. And it's cool that we're talking about Web 2.0 because the, the nature of the blogs is that it's it's a dialogue and it's a conversation. So when, when Jason threw down the gauntlet that he wanted me to take the stage with him, uh, there was no shortage of readers that had their own questions that they wanted to ask uh, Jason Goldberg. So while these questions have been uh, Cheesified and, and have my, my spin on them, uh, they're really largely from uh, the readers of Cheesehead. So, if you're still ready to do this, still? We'll, get it, we'll get it on here. Question number one. Joel goes to his phone to find his questions. You like that, don't you? I do. I didn't bring up any piece of paper. <laughs> okay. Uh, number one. Jobster's been a referral service, vertical search engine, social network, and free-for-all job posting site. In between, you've been into video resumes, tagging, and a widget maker. So the question is, what does Jobster want to be when it grows up? You know, very simple, Joel, is uh, we set out three years ago to try to change the way employers recruit, to try to provide new tools and new ways to help employers reach beyond the job boards to find candidates, to get matched with the right candidate. We looked at the problem, you know, going back to when you start a company, you say, what business problem are you trying to solve? The business problem we were trying to solve is employers told us they, they needed a better way to go beyond the tools they had to get matched with the right candidates. And job seekers, individuals, told us they needed a better way to go beyond the traditional tools that they had to get matched with the right job opportunity. As I mentioned in the presentation here, in Jobster, we position ourselves as the career center for the digital generation. And a career center is not just about a feature. It's about a compilation of features that solve the business problem. And so what does the digital generation want? Well, they want video, they want referrals, they want social networks, they want tags, they want vertical search. They want all these things brought to them in a very easy to use way. And so it's not about the individual feature, it's about how do we give people, empower them with tools to help them solve the actual problem they want to solve. And that's what Jobster's doing. So, so if I could confirm, and you could take a magic wand, and anyone who asks what is Jobster, the answer that you'd want them to say is a career center for the digital generation. That would work. Okay. Question number two. Uh, internal reports say that morale at Jobster is low. Aside from laying off 40, so, 40 or so percent of your workforce in December, a list of executives leaving by their own free will include VPs of sales, business development, and customer service. Is this a case of the rats escaping a sinking ship? <laughs> or is there something else going on here? You know, Joel, first I'll say, uh, you got your facts wrong, but we're not going to debate the internal uh, facts right now. Um, Jobster went through a regeneration uh, at the end of last year. Uh, one of the things that I did as CEO of the company was I promised our investors at the end of last year that we would look at how were we running our business and what was the most efficient way to create customer value in 2007. And one of the things that I looked at is the stool that we were standing on had three legs at the time. We had a direct sales force, we had a telephone sales force, and we had an online service. And the fact of the matter is that our direct sales was very expensive. And having a direct sales team is very expensive, and it's kind of the web 1.0 way of doing business. You look at a company like Salesforce.com that has 600,000 plus subscribers and doesn't have a single uh, direct salesperson. That's the old way of doing it. And we looked at in 2007 is, well, what if instead of paying for a direct sales team, we could give money back to customers, give the value back to customers, invest that money in building solutions. And so that's what we did. And, you know, is it sad to see some people that you built a company with go? Absolutely. Do I think we made the smart business decision to have this company be profitable this year, to be able to continue to innovate, to be able to uh, build new technologies? Absolutely. Would I make the same choice again? Absolutely. Now, in terms of people leaving the company, look, some people were asked to leave, some people have left. The fact of the matter is that there are 65 people at Jobster today that are dying to go and solve these problems. And that's what matters most, is how do we go and get excited about solving customers' problems and we've got a great sized company right now to do that. You learned a thing or two working for Bill Clinton, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Question number three. Is this the, the closing music? I like to the Academy. Ladies and gentlemen, the main presentation will start at 9 o'clock. criticized Monster's use of banner advertising, saying they had turned their homepage into, quote, NASCAR. This month, you yourself launched advertising. Would you like to apologize to Monster? And, and isn't this move a clear sign that times aren't so rosy at Jobster? Uh, actually, again, Joe, I think you've got your facts wrong, but I'll address it head on. It's one of the things that I, I, I said about Monster is, you know, first of all, I have a lot of respect for Monster, a lot of respect for Career Motor. I actually have a dialogue with executives of both of those companies. I spoke to senior executives at Monster just this past week. It's a good thing to report, and I think they appreciate that we're trying to make innovation in the industry, and we appreciate that they've been the leaders in the industry. What I did say that I thought was bad from a user experience standpoint is that if you go and do a job search on Monster, they immediately give the user what's called an interstitial ad gauge that tries to collect personal information about that user by pitching them good loans or mortgages or something else. And I think that's just bad user experience, and I'll rail against user experience every single day. Let people get to the information they're trying to get to. Yeah. One more. All right, one more, he says. Okay. Uh, you recently opened your business model to free postings. You've also opened your job seeker data. Uh, this seems less about sound business and more about beefing up your user databases, both employer and job seeker, uh, and the search engine traffic to position the company for acquisition and making the most out of a bad situation uh, for your $50 million in DC funding. Uh, with all due respect, Joel, I'll tell you that uh, I'm not sure there's a question there, but what I will say is that, uh, you know, Jobster launched free job postings in February. Uh, we've had more than 15,000 free job posts in just the last two months. We've had a million people visiting our website and just waiting to see where we're going. With it. And uh, we have here nothing but optimistic about jobs for the future. We've got plenty of money in the bank. Jobs are not going anywhere. And in fact, we're just getting started. Thank you, sir.